Hello, Abaddon Sentinel here again, and I'm coming with another video about the Citadel paint range. Now, since the video I made last week, uh, Games Workshop have come up with a couple more articles uh, explaining a few different things about their paint range. Uh, we had one about the science behind it, we've had uh, another one showcasing an entire army painted in a week, and we've got another article explaining um, what you can expect to see uh, starting from this Saturday when you can pre-order. Uh, now, I apologise in advance if there's a couple of odd uh, editing cuts in uh, this video. I'm suffering from a, quite a tickly throat at the moment, so I keep coughing. So I might have to cut some bits out due to coughing fits, so I apologise in advance for that. Uh, but I'll crack straight on and show you these uh, articles and go through and tell you what I'm thinking about them. Um, hopefully you'll find something useful from my thoughts on it, uh, help you decide um, whether or not you're excited for the new ranges with some of the extra information we've been given uh, so let's carry on first up we've got this the science of paint article uh, it's got a few interesting things in here I'll just pick out a couple of uh, interesting bits uh, so it explains to you basically how Games Workshop develop their paints the kind of things that they look for uh, the qualities that they're trying to develop uh, this little chart here shows you know all the different things that they take into consideration while they're going through the uh, development process uh, so as you can see there's actually quite a lot of different things that they've got to try and make you know a decent standard when they're developing these paints it's quite interesting I find uh, to see this side of things so obviously we we get the paints normally and we use them whether they're by Games Workshop or another company such as Army Painter um, the Vallejo range you know, we get them, we use them, we decide whether we like them or not. Um, but a lot of the time, we don't actually give that much thought to how much work it goes into developing these. So it's it's quite interesting that Games Workshop are giving us a, a bit of a talk through what goes into developing these new ranges. Um, and yeah, the basically, it, it's just a very interesting um, little. I'm going to say a side note to the main range release of the contrast paints. Um, so obviously they do talk specifically about uh, some of the contrast range. Um, that you know that is what they're trying to push at the moment. Uh, for example, they've got this great and clean one that's been painted with contrast paints. And uh, again, it's not uh, an award-winning standard, but to be honest, for a couple of layers of contrast on that without any uh, extra detailing being done, I think that you know that looks pretty decent for use on a tabletop. Uh, main thing that they've announced in this article as well is the fact that they've got these two uh, new technical paints coming out. They're both varnishes, so Ad Cut we're all very familiar with anyway. Um, it's It's been around for a while now. Uh, apparently they've basically just made a new version of it. Uh, hopefully it'll have just improved uh, a lot of the qualities that were already there. A nice uh, hard finish to protect your miniature. Uh, the Technical Storm Shield, uh, it's a matte version, same kind of idea, but, you know, just a different finish. Um, but yeah, that, that's it for this article that I'm really going to go through. Um, you know, I don't want to bore you with all the science behind things, just pointing it out to you and saying why I find it interesting. If you want to have a look at that, obviously go to the Warhammer Community website and you'll be able to see it for yourself. So um, next up, I'm going to be going to the An Army in One Week article. So obviously here we've got the Gloom Spike Gits. Um, a fairly, obviously, recent release for Games Workshop. I understand why they've chosen this particular range, because obviously, with it being fairly recent, it's, it's quite good to show off these new products um, alongside other recently released products. You know, good marketing strategy, I think, to be honest. Um, but they are actually also very good models for showing what contrast can do. They've got a lot of um, nice little details for the contrast to highlight. So, for example, this... Uh, particular example it's brilliant because there's not too many colors on there you know this is a this is their battle ready standard um, there's not too many colors on there they've literally put some coats of uh, contrast paint on um, maybe I don't know they might have added a couple of extra highlights but other than that it's, you know those are very good um, quality miniatures for uh, you know just a, a, a battle ready standard um, and it's just a very good example of what contrast paints can do for you. And the fact that obviously he's managed to do all these different um, creatures in a week is pretty impressive. Before you know contrast paints, 
there's not a chance we, you know any anyone have been able to really dream unless they were doing it full time you know of painting anything near this standard at this quantity uh, in such a short period of time you know one week I, I wouldn't expect you know with the amount of time I have available around work to be able to paint even a single unit of um, you know say 10 Chaos Space Marines um, but if if the contrast paints are going to allow people to paint so quickly and allow this battle ready standard that looks actually okay on the tabletop then you know it's, I think it's going to make for much more interesting well visually interesting games uh, down at our local gaming shops now I'm going to skip over to the pre-order article well this is pre-order next week now the thing I found interesting about this is the fact that it's not just the contrast paints there's actually a lot more that they're releasing alongside them so obviously contrast is going to be a big thing but they've come up with uh, quite a few new uh, base colors as well mostly um, for if you're wanting to get a, a suitable base coat for your um, Horus Heresy era miniatures you know there's most of them are to do with the different legions um, you know the different um, base colors for those particular armors so the Phoenician purple I think I'm pronouncing that right um, it was obviously going to be like a, an Emperor's Children style purple whereas I mean Iron Hand Steel and Iron Warriors are obvious which which therefore and Grey Knight Steel that kind of stuff um, makes it very obvious but you know it's I think it's quite nice that they, they're coming up with these because beforehand if you wanted to try and get the look of that army you know the, the specific colours <coughs> you were you're having to really estimate what the closest base paint might be or try and mix a couple and it made it a bit difficult whereas this you know for those people that aren't as confident doing that just gives you straight up this is what colour um, the base of that armour should be which I think is going to be invaluable to a lot of people that you know similar to the people that are going to want to use the contrast paints if they're not uh, wanting to spend ages and ages painting or learning all the different techniques for mixing and things like that it's brilliant that they'll be able to just go yeah that's the colour for this army I'll put that on there so I, you know, I think it's quite a smart move of Games Workshop to, to come out with more stuff like this it's, uh, it's pretty good um, I should point out as well that they've said that basically they're doing a relaunch of all their other um, colours alongside the contrast range uh, I wouldn't exactly call it a relaunch because uh, they're saying that they're relaunching the entire range of the air paints. It's, it's not specifically a relaunch. They like the main thing is all the current colours are now going to be available in larger pots. That's pretty much it. Obviously, we've got some air versions of the newer colours that they are bringing out uh, in the standard range. Um, so you know they're going to be available to people using airbrushes as well. Uh, obviously, they've got the contrast things, and I want to focus here I like obviously this um, chart simply because it gives you the, obviously that gradient look at what each of those colours is so yeah it's not going to be perfect because it depends what you're putting it over the top of it's going to give you an idea of what kind of colour the contrast paints are going to come out um, in both you know the flat surfaces the um, recesses the edges um, so you can see, I mean, it's quite interesting to see you know, the apothecary white down here. You can see obviously it's, for the most part, it's white. And then as it starts to gradient into where it's going to be shaded into recesses, see that it's got that grey to it, but it's a, it's a slight bluey grey. So it's, it's nice to be able to see this in advance and know, right, so that's what kind of finish I'm going to get from that. And the same for pretty much all of the other colours. Um, it's nice to be able to see ahead of time what each of those different things are going to give you because Blood Angel's red, Flesh Tear is red you can look at the pot and say okay they're two slightly different reds um, you know maybe I want a slightly darker one, maybe I want a slightly brighter one um, but it doesn't really tell you how it's going to affect it when it's on the miniature and it's sinking into those recesses or um, it's pulling itself thin across the edges um, so it's nice to be able to see these chart on this chart you know 
what kind of colours they're, they're going to be in that gradient. Now, I think this might be the full range at release. I haven't counted them all. Um, I'm pretty sure they said there was going to be something around like 40 different uh, colours at release. Which does say to me that they're probably going to be releasing more at some point. Uh, but that is quite a, a range of colours to be going on with, essentially, for getting your armies painted and you know up to a this this battle ready standard that they're trying to push at the moment um i think you know you'll struggle to not find a color that will be suitable for what you're doing um obviously it might not be the perfect color but if you're going to go for, trying to go for the perfect color obviously you want to be doing something a bit more in depth than the contrast paints anyway so to get your your battle ready finish these are going to be fine and obviously they've, you know, pointed out the technical paints. Um, they do have a little thing here as well at the end of the article about um, if you're ordering specific uh, types of paint in these quantities, it's about getting a discount and things like that. Um, it's not going to be useful to everyone. Most people are already going to have the bases that they want. They're already going to have the shades that they want. Uh, probably already got the technicals that they want. But yeah, if your like will to paint has been sparked by... Uh, the release of the contrast paints, and you hadn't been doing that much before, it's probably going to be quite a good little investment for you to um, pick up these kind of colours. You know, you can get three contrast paints, four base paints, two shades, one technical. Uh, it gives gives you those contrast paints you can use for doing miniatures quickly, but then when you decide you want to advance to something a bit more, if you decide that, you've got plenty of colours to then um, work with and add to your uh, your finished miniatures you've got plenty of colors to work with to uh, add to your previous uh, miniatures so it'd be quite nice then you know once you've done your contrast paints um, maybe you want to add a little bit extra recess shading in uh, or you know maybe you want to try out some different bases underneath your contrast you know in, in that kind of situation it's going to be quite good for those uh, new painters to be able to experiment with things um, so, you know, it's while it's not for everyone, I think it does have its place, this little offer. Um doesn't say whether or not it's specifically going to be just if you're ordering from the website or from the Games Workshop stores themselves. Um, so it might be that you can also do it from third-party retailers as well. But obviously, we'll have to see. It just says that um, there's going to there's gonna be more information about it closer to the release date. So... We'll just have to see where that goes. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on contrast paints as well. Obviously, I'm putting myself out here like telling you what I think. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to get some other perspectives as well. Uh, so if you want to share your views, uh, your possible experiences, if you've managed to somehow get your hands on them already, I know some other YouTubers have. Um, but, you know, it's, I think it's good to try and share opinions, maybe come up with uh, extra ideas, things we can try with them. So yeah, remember to like this video, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button, and uh, come back for more in the future. I'll see you later.